There's nothing that can substitute the force and the impact uh, of these images. To, to illustrate one of the key challenges that we as a South African nation face, and that is to deal with the legacy of apartheid spatial planning, the legacy of apartheid spatial separation and, and division. When we say in our constitution that our national vision is to create a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous nation. We say that quite often. Those are good concepts, those are concepts that roll easily off the tongue. But once you start thinking about what those concepts actually mean and what a society that matches that description would actually look like, if we sit back and we, we close our eyes and we imagine what, what is a society that is non-racial? Where are we as a society and what distance would we have to travel before we could say that our society is a non-racial society? One of the major stumbling blocks, I would argue, in the creation of a united and a non-racial society is dealing with what is shown in these photographs because for as long as we we live where we live how we live with whom we live is determined by the past patterns of apartheid spatial planning it's going to be very very difficult to forge that united and non-racial nation. One thing that this project has really showed to me more than anything else is that the individual stories that people speak about and the history that I get to hear about how people grew up, how their families were forcibly removed, how they still struggle with legacies of spatial apartheid era planning and or segregation even in today's society which is so difficult to transcend especially in Cape Town where I live now that it makes me feel like I'm I somehow did the right thing because that first image the Lake Michelle Masapumalele image that's the first image I took in this whole series I got so much criticism for that image initially if you go back to my Millie, Millie Photo Facebook page, which is sort of like my brand or my business, first three or four comments that I got just focused on either the fact that I was foreign or the fact that I wasn't qualified to comment on these types of issues or the fact that I was painting South Africa in somehow like a negative PR kind of light, that these images probably shouldn't be disseminated in the way so publicly that I was trying to do because Australia or England or Canada or America, they're looking at these images as just another example of South Africa as some sort of basket case society where things never go right. It was never my intention with any of the images and I'm so happy that I continued with the series because the fourth, fifth and sixth comments and the 70th, 80th and 100th comments on that photo interspersed with the negative ones were extremely positive. There were stories saying, this resonates with me somehow. Um, they synthesize very complex macroeconomic, urban planning, historical, political issues into one image that I can then share with my friends and family, perhaps who don't live in South Africa, and allow them some sort of ability to understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about very complex issues. That's the sort of thing that encouraged me to keep going with the project. Um, and to this day, actually, as I'm continuing with the project, going onto the ground and speaking to people, and then perhaps even going international with the project, I'm keeping that in the back of my mind, how I'm just constantly inspired by the personal story. The fact that I'm a portrait photographer, or at least I like to think of myself as a portrait photographer, because those are the images that resonate with me the most, is someone's eyes, looking into someone's eyes when I take their photo, and having that type of photo represent their narrative 
the best way that I know how as a photographer. But nothing I was taking up to this point connected with people the way that these drone photos have. So it took flying several hundred meters into the air and erasing any sort of human connection from the photo to actually get people to pay attention. In today's age of like maybe new media, internet media, we're constantly looking for new ways of connecting with people. These old issues of inequality, of segregation, of apartheid, those are all sort of like old issues, right? We all know they exist. How do we get those old issues into new eyes, new brains, right? And I think maybe I've unwittingly stumbled on this new perspective, this new way to sort of get across these old issues. It's really resonating. Thank <laughs> you.